Hey everyone, this is Noah. I'm gonna get into my story, what brought me to truth and understanding and clarity and love and joy and peace and harmony and everything. And I, I think it's important for me to share this because uh, the Bible says that our testimonies are, you know, valuable and important and they can help people. And, you know, I want to share that with you. I'll get into like my childhood, my, my teenage years, my college years, my new age years, my atheist years, and uh, this year when I was sort of reconciled with Jesus Christ and I asked him to be Lord of my life and I realized um, many, many things after that. Yeah, let's just, let's just jump right in. I grew up in an awesome family. Me and my two other siblings, older brother, younger sister, when we were confirmed, we got the option to not go to church if we didn't want to. And I never really had the church sink into me. And I never went to church after that. Um, maybe once or twice, but, but that was it. I wasn't interested. I didn't care. Um, you know, I, I, this was in high school when I was confirmed, but I had gotten into smoking and drinking every once in a while on occasion starting my freshman year. I don't condone uh, smoking marijuana. You don't want that uh, taking your power away. And I'll talk about that a little later too. You know what I mean by it taking the power away from me. So I got confirmed. I never went back to church. My sense of spirituality was um, non-existent. My sense of spirituality was not there. I I was wrapped up in my own little world. I was focused on high school, as many high schoolers are, and that's perfectly fine. I wasn't raised like to really like we we talked about God every once in a while, but it was very short and uh, not really in depth too much. So, you know, I wasn't spiritual in any way. Uh, senior year, I started researching and I got into researching travel. So I, I really wanted to be a traveler. I wanted to travel the world. I just wanted to see everything. So I graduated senior year. Shout out to all my classmates, all 58 of you. I still have love for all of you. All of you. I still have, I still got love for you. Sending it out. Thanks for watching. Um, then I graduated. I took a trip to Colorado. None of my friends came with me, though I invited them because of money issues. But what I wanted to do was experience budget travel. So I wanted to experience how to travel with, a, with the least amount of money possible spent. So I went to Colorado. I drifted around in my car. I saw the cities. I saw the mountains. The, I just saw the beauty of it. I just loved, I loved the mountains. I loved the cities. I loved Denver. I love all that. So... Anyways, I, I went on this trip and something interesting started happening. I was driving there to Colorado when I started seeing uh, different synchronicities pop up. And anyone familiar with the New Age who's watching this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And this started happening. It caught my eye, obviously, because like, you can't ignore this thing when it starts happening to you. You can for a little bit. But eventually, you're going to have to give in. You're going to say, yeah, something's up here. So <laughs> so these coincidences started happening. And I realized, like, whoa, there's, like, something else going on. And it's not just the material, you know. And, you know, that sort of opened my, my eyes a little bit, along with the whole travel experience and being on my own. Oh, forgot to mention, I am in a quality inn in Eau Claire right now. That's why the surroundings are different. That's why I've got a different setting, whatever. Um, so where was I? Coincidences, travel. Yeah, I got back and I went to Eau Claire. And I was a freshman in the dorms and, you know, I was a partying kid. I got I got way more into weed smoking and drinking. You know, people people all go through their own things and that's one thing I went through for a little while. Was I was a drinker. You know, it, it just, uh, drugs made their way into my life more. Then uh, then I took a gap semester. After the first semester, I actually took a gap because I didn't want to spend any more money before I knew what I was doing. I wanted to be an entrepreneur of some sort. I just knew I wanted to travel. I used to work at a zoo with these tigers and stuff, and it was cool. And and uh, I w that's where I was working during this gap semester. And then uh, that was election season. So politics was my favorite class in the first semester of college where I was actually in classes. 
And I got into politics because of it. And the election season came, and then you know Trump versus Hillary, like that bash, uh, really really hit me. And I was all for Bernie Sanders, so I was really 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 ticked off. And that was something that I struggled with was controlling my rage. So I really was hitting the research then. And online research isn't always the best, but I was doing I was doing a lot of online research and. Um, I researched conspiracy theories, I researched um, spirituality I started getting into. So I was living with a Buddhist in Eau Claire. I don't know if she still is. Uh, shout out to Sammy, she's my roommate, and her boyfriend Matt. Shout out to you and Abby. Y'all are great. I love you. Um, so I was living with these folks and we had, you know, we had an awesome house. It was all full of new age stuff, full of crystals, full of plants, uh, thanks to Sammy, <laughs> full of all sorts of stuff. And it was beautiful. It's like a little hippie home. And something that happened, though, is I, I sort of got so upset with politics that I just plunged right into the new age. I really went headfirst into that type of stuff. I was reading. I was working. I wasn't in college. I, I dropped out of college at this point. So I was like really hitting the books hard on this new age movement. I really wanted to know, I was reading Eastern philosophy. I wanted to know what was out there. And my whole church experience, uh, I just thought church was a you know way to control the masses, which religion, though it is partially that, and it has been used for that, as we all know, uh, it also has a much deeper, much deeper spiritual meaning. Anyways, I thought the church was was a terrible thing. I thought it was just no good. I turned away from the Lord and I didn't accept him. I thought he was one of many ascended masters. I'll be talking about the new age, but just watch out for that. Watch out for that word, ascended masters. Um, Jesus is not one of many. He is one and he is alive and he is our Lord and he loves us and he loves you. you know, he, loves, he loves everything about you guys and he just wants you to come back to him. He just wants you to come back to him. Anyways, I was living, I was living with these more new agey people, and I was doing my own research. I was really diving in. Uh, I started using tarot cards. I started reading tarot cards. I started like I was super into tarot cards. I was using this this tarot as a sort of tool to to feel the sense of clarity in the messages I was receiving from the spiritual plane, at least from my mind, you know, to sort out my mind. It's not necessary to communicate with God using a mediator like that. You know, the mediator is Jesus Christ between us and God, and that's as simple as that. He's the one mediator. Anyways, I was super into terror and all that stuff, and I decided to take a hitchhike, um, because the summer was coming around, I wanted to really test myself, so I decided I'm going to take a hitchhike. So I did. You know, I, I packed and packed my bags, stuck my thumb up. So, you know, I wanted not only to be sustainable to test myself, but I wanted to find myself. I wanted to find my purpose for my life. I wanted to find God. I wanted to find out what it was all about. And I really wanted to have, like, an experience. Um... Since I'd gotten into the New Age, I wanted to uh, be a shaman, uh, believe it or not. In this town especially, I met a lot of Reiki masters, a lot of people doing energy work and healing and working with whatever it be. I met an herbalist from Nepal, like, and he had a glow around him. One of the first nights I was there, I went to this seminar where he was speaking. This is a short little guy. He was like, he was like up to here on me uh, from Nepal. And, and he was an herbal doctor. He rode a horse from town to town carrying his medicine bags and healed, like, in a 30-mile radius or so. He healed maybe more than that. He healed, he was the one doctor um, in that whole area, and he rode a horse to his patients. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> um, and he had, like, a, he had a glow around him. Like, the Dalai Lama apparently had done a ceremony three times with him. They had done a sort of ceremony where they filled him with light and sort of locked it in him, is what they explained it as. Several things happened. God was teaching me there. He actually showed me what my purpose was there, and I broke down crying when I realized what he was showing me. How he was communicating with me was just, I was praying to him. I was asking him for it. I did this thing called an all-night prayer. It was a Native American ceremony called an all-night prayer, and it was, it was a very beautiful, 
ceremony. Everyone was around um, in a circle in a teepee around a fire, like a giant fire in the middle. And we just stayed up all night and basically prayed and sang songs and stuff like that. And my prayer that night was to, you know, prosperity, stuff like that. And I wanted to know my purpose. I really wanted to know my purpose. And I discovered it that very night God showed me um, with this man who was struggling. He was actually having a a really hard time. He was crying and stuff. And I looked at him. I decided, like, I looked at him. I said, I said to myself, I, I can't let this guy take all this attention. Uh, he doesn't want it right now. He's suffering. I'm going to, I'm going to get up and do something. So I got up and I started to walk around the circle towards where he was. And I sort of drew the attention off him for the split second that he needed in order to sort of gather himself and sit back down. And I thought it was I thought it was beautiful, and then later I realized um, as I was thinking about it, I realized what God was telling me through that, among other things, among among other things, because this was a long night. We stayed up all night. Um, I realized that God wanted me to help people that were suffering like this man. God wanted me to. God's purpose for my life on this earth is to be sort of like a sort of like just a help, a helping hand. It's as simple as that. He wanted me to love people and he wanted me to act on that love. And that's what he showed me that night. I cried. I cried so hard. <clears throat> people were looking at me and I was, I was smiling like while I was crying. I was, I was so happy that God showed me this, this part of myself, this reason for being here. And it wasn't specific, but I realized like it's all about love. It's all about this connection, it's all about helping, easing others' suffering. Whatever the, the, the small acts that we can give to help those who are suffering is what it's all about, you guys. And that's truly, I think, everyone's purpose on this earth, among other things. But like I said, that wasn't too specific. I learned a little more specifically later on and, and uh, in another video or something. I'll tell you guys about that and I'll tell you a little more in depth what all went on but um anyways like the connections i made in crestone were were just outstanding they they stood out to me and when i met these people these reiki masters these spiritual people what people would call themselves like the craziest names and <laughs> like i met this girl named rainbow there i met uh mr coyote um I met all these different people. I, I was staying for a little bit with a man named Noah, actually, the same name as my name. And, and uh, he and his girlfriend at the time, I think they are still dating, thank God. They were just so welcoming to me. And, and it, it's, that's the environment that was there. Everyone was so welcoming. Um, people had different beliefs. There's one guy with strong, strong, strong Christian faith. Actually, more than a few people with strong Christian faith. It's just they didn't all really keep um keep the subject focused on that like they were all over the place they are still all in the new age they were still all about crystals and ley lines and energy grids and energy vortexes and auras and chakras and things like that tarot all those types of things they're still into them uh, but they also follow jesus it wasn't everybody you know there were just new age people there were uh even just hindu people and um you know buddhist people there, there were temples there for these religions. There were temples. Then I moved on and I went to Sedona, Arizona. A lot more people probably heard of Sedona. It is a lot more touristy. It's like a new age theme park. It's like a new age amusement park. This whole town, like full of new age. And I moved on pretty quick from there. I wanted to explore the energy vortexes, but I didn't know how I was going to do that. If I couldn't find them, I was alone. I was you know, just me in my backpack at this time. I was sleeping outside and the people were still, everyone who picked me up on this hitchhike was just so beautiful to me. They were willing to take me out, um, give me money, give me food, whatever it was, and just, you know, give me a ride. So it was beautiful. Um, then I moved on from Sedona. I went to LA. I was staying with these beautiful, absolutely the, the most beautiful people I think I've ever come across in my lifetime. These people uh, changed my life in more than one way. They, There's one man, I forget his name, but he was playing the guitar. 
on the beach and singing about peace and love and and uh, improvising on the guitar and stuff like that. It was just beautiful. And his friend, his friend had a dog, and so they were living on the beach. They slept on the sand, uh, on these blankets that they had laid out, and they didn't have to worry about the weather much because it never rains in L.A., <laughs> right? So, so that's what I was doing for about four days, and then I got injured. I don't know what happened with my injury. Most of you who are watching this probably know about it. I don't know what happened. I truly don't. I like. I'm not. I'm not just saying that because I'm embarrassed or anything. Like the the nurses told me that sometimes traumatic experiences will take the memory of what happened out completely, and I haven't even dreamed of it. No PTSD, nothing like that, which is actually like a blessing. But I got placed in the hospital, and throughout this whole hike, though, I knew God was with me, and I felt God with me, and God was teaching me. And this injury, I feel, was necessary for, to bring me back home. Otherwise, I was planning on going up to Oregon and continuing on this sort of New Age train that I was on, going, in, going into the Rainbow Festivals where a lot of psychedelics are, where a lot of uh, drugs are. And uh, it's not always the safest scene. 